What's up guys, it's National Master Dem Apples here, back with another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at this trap that millions of chess players have fallen for. Now you might not recognize this trap at first because it's not super common, but it comes from a really, really common opening. So we're going to start with a normal Italian game and the Gioco Piano. White's idea here is to play d4, supported by the pawn on c3, and very straightforward, white gets it. Uh, note that black is playing very logical, developing moves, but he's going to get punished. After takes, takes, check, this is still theory, and white begins the trap by blocking with the knight. Now, if you've known in my previous videos, uh, bishop d2 is a pretty good move as well. But knight c3 is a very trappy option, because you might say to yourself, well, this knight is pinned, so this pawn is free, isn't it? And so black takes the pawn, and he thinks, well, you can't punish me because if you go queen e2 trying to pin me, I'm just gonna unpin myself. And black is not wrong with this, white is indeed a little bit worse here. But we don't have to go down this rabbit hole. Instead, we can castle our king, and what this does is it sacrifices another pawn. Now, black has one solid continuation here. The best continuation here is to take with the bishop and go pawn to d5. But after bishop d3, white has the bishop pair and quite a bit of activity. If black dilly-daddles for another moment, white's going to go bishop to a3, preventing black from castling. So this is still all right for white, and the position is roughly equal. In fact, if black takes this pawn again, uh, white is already better after rook to e1 check with the ideas of bishop to a3 next. But this trap is going to focus on knight takes c3 rather than bishop takes c3. So after b takes c3, black is already committed, okay? he If, if this happens, he's going to take here. Like, ain't no way he's finding this obscure move, after which white is... A little bit better after this continuation but nobody's going to play that you play knight takes knight so you can play bishop takes pawn that's if you play a you got to play b now white has a really nice response here you might think that bishop takes f7 check king takes and something like i don't know queen b3 is the best option but actually after pawn to d5 and queen takes bishop black is a little bit better and I'll show you why a bit later in the video. So, after a bishop takes c3, the best move is to sacrifice the rook on a1. Now, why do we do this? Well, let's see what happens if black takes the rook. We take this pawn with check, and you might think there's nothing going on. So, black can move the king to either e7 or f8. Let's start with e7. If king e7, the first and most straightforward way of winning is this check, which unleashes a nasty skewer on the king and the queen, and attacks the bishop as well. So white's winning here, he's winning a lot of material, but the flashiest way to win is rook to e1 check, and after king to f8, because if black goes king to d6, bishop to uh f4 is mate in 3, but queen to d5 is just mate in 1. So, black has to go back, and after bishop to h5, we threaten checkmate here. Black has to defend this, and he goes pawn to d5. Well, he can't really go queen f6, covering f7, because rook to e8 is just straight up checkmate. And we have, after pawn to d5, we have a funny tactic to exploit. And this is why this opening is so trappy. We have queen takes d5, sacrificing the queen, deflecting the queen away. And this is already forced mate, by the way. Uh, black should just end it with queen takes queen and rook check. Black is up 14 points of material, but his king is dead. So black should play king to f8. And after bishop g5, we attack the queen. And it becomes apparent that black's queen is really low on squares right now. And so... Usually, they'll block the attack with the queen, because the queen can't move anywhere. After which, we play 
A somewhat obscure move, but it pretty much wins us the game. White already has a decisive advantage, but this just seals it. Even rook takes bishop is just completely winning. But we have knight to e5. Why knight to e5? This looks really confusing, right? We're just protecting a bishop that was already protected? Like, what are we doing here, right? So black is like, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll take this free pawn and save my bishop, which was being attacked. But here comes the banger. Bishop to g6, and it immediately becomes apparent why white put the knight on e5. Two pieces control f7 now, meaning that black can't just take this knight and get away with it. No, this is just straight up checkmate. So he has to defend this checkmate, but how? The only way to do this is by blocking the queen. And so, pawn to d5, blocking the queen's diagonal. But he did not block the queen's file. Haha. -ha. So queen f3 check. And now, black's king has nowhere to go, so he must block with the knight or the bishop. Honestly, black should block with the bishop, because if he blocks with the knight, he loses even more, but even, even though it's still forced checkmate. And after bishop takes bishop, um, black is just screwed. He has to play knight to g8, but no one's gonna find that, and after knight to g8, I mean, white just wins a queen anyways. So after bishop takes knight, we have bishop to e6 check. Discover check, by the way. Uh, if king to e8, we have checkmate in one. And after bishop to f6, we have the nice move. Bishop takes bishop. And yeah, this is going to be forced mate if black takes. So take, take, checkmate. So black cannot take us. Instead, he has to go queen e8. Uh, protecting the f7 square. But this is just delaying the inevitable. After bishop to h4, check. Um, yeah, the king still has nowhere to go. Knight f5, queen takes f5, queen f7, queen f7, checkmate. So what we learn from this? Well, this opening, the Gioco piano, when you go c3 and d4, is definitely a much better way to play the Italian game than the classic, like, knight c3 or castles. And this particular line is quite aggressive, because it involves sacrificing a, quite a bit of material. It doesn't matter whether black takes with the bishop or the knight. Like, white's idea is to go bishop a3, preventing black from castling, and start a huge attack. This is just how it goes. I mean, there are a ton of games in the Romantic era a long time ago uh, that ended up like this, where white just won with a brilliant attack. And you can still replicate this. But after takes, takes, after black takes the pawn, you've already won the game, pretty much. If you can remember this queen to be three moves, sacrificing the rook, and this following continuation, the important move, knight to e5, controlling f7 again. You move the bishop away, threatening checkmate. The queen slides over, and yeah, this is just over now. There's nothing black can do. His king is simply too weak, and his pieces are clogging up all the squares he'd like to go to. Know how powerful this light squared bishop is so thanks for watching like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want to see any more traps and yeah subscribe thanks bye